I did not think that I would ever have occasion to pilot a suit of Magitek armor again. Least of all under these circumstances. My full name is Lucia Go Junius, and I was born a citizen of Garlemald. Ah, that explains it. When we first met in Ishgard, I very nearly called you Livia. Livia? Livia Sus Junius? The tribunus who served under Gaius van Bailsar? Aye, she was my sister. Though we spent little time together. After our parents were killed in an uprising, we were sent to live in different households, setting us on separate paths. Livia felt at home on the battlefield and chose to become a soldier, while I underwent training to become a spy. Then... My mission. It was believed that Alagarn relics of great worth were stored. Though I was given little information at the time, I now suspect I was searching for the key we but recently lost. And then I met Sir Emmerich. It was his usefulness to my mission which prompted me to approach him. But I soon found myself drawn to him for other reasons. He too was a prisoner of his past. Judged for his heritage as a bastard son of the Archbishop. Yet unlike my sister and I, he did not curse his fate. He simply rose above it. In time, I came to realize that I had found a man worth following. And a new home besides. And when I subsequently confessed all to Sir Emmerich, he was good enough to accept me into his service. I do not question your loyalty to Sir Emmerich. It is your loyalty to your sister which concerns me. I have long been of the opinion that those who dwell in the past risk losing sight of their future. My sister fought for her convictions and for those she held dear. So do I. So must we all. Well, I, for one, am happy to welcome a fellow Garlean to our merry band. Especially one who can make Magitek armor sing. Chief, we should be getting close. Once we break through those clouds, we'll be right where the light was pointing. Right where Azizla should be. Hold on, everyone! Mistaking their handiwork. What was that? Some sort of barrier. She won't hold, Chief. She's breaking up. I've lost the artillery propeller. Sid, it's no use. We must return to Ishgard and find another way. God damn it all. Why do the Alagans always have to make everything so bloody complicated?
In summary, the Isle owes its lofty position to the industry of the Alagards. And we can be all but certain that the Archbishop and his cronies are enjoying the view from its top. I see. If we are to join them, we will first need to pass through the Isle's etheric barrier, which is, alas, more powerful than most. Powerful enough to make a mess of a perfectly good airship, at any rate. As far as I can gather, the barrier mechanism draws ether from the surrounding environment and polarizes its elemental aspect to produce what is, in effect, a wall of lightning. It seems plain that without the Vanu's key, any attempt to reach the Isle will end in failure. Alas, the key was careless enough to leave without us, and I don't think the Vanu keep a spare. Master Garland, based on your experience, is there no other way that we might breach the barrier? Well, in the past, we've beaten similar barriers by nullifying them with elemental converters. But the one we're up against this time dwarfs aught we've encountered before. The Enterprise simply isn't large enough to bear the requisite amount of crystals. I'm reminded of the quantity needed to nullify Leviathan's command of the sea. A veritable mountain of crystals that could only be borne by lashing two galleons together to form a twin vessel, scarcely able to propel itself, much less fly. That said, we're not without options. If it isn't feasible to nullify the barrier, we might try piercing it. How? We create a ram of condensed ether and mount it on my ship. There's just one problem. I don't have the faintest idea how to build one. It's going to take a true authority in the field, I reckon. Would that the Archons were still with us. But yesterday evening, I chanced to find Mistress Tataru in unusually high spirits. Assuming I understood her excited ramblings correctly, she has acquired a clue, pointing to the whereabouts of one such individual. An Archon? Truly? Ha! Fortune favors the righteous, eh? Well then, let's not waste any time. While you go and look for our missing friend, I'll work on modifying the Enterprise. Her hull will need reinforcing to bear the punishment, not to mention a mount for the ram. Just you wait, my pretty. By the time I'm finished, you'll be an airship reborn.
In requesting the Elemental's assistance to find Jostola, you must needs be aware of one difficulty. A difficulty born of the fundamental difference between man and Elemental. That being... In perceiving the world around him, man relies upon senses such as sight. Being formed of pure ether, however, such concepts are foreign to the elementals. Instead, so profound a division cannot be bridged with simple discourse. The elementals' voices stir not the air, and thus reach not our ears, while our words are but wind to them. Though we seers can commune with them through feelings, naught that we can impart will serve to aid them in identifying Yshtola. Nay, they must needs be presented with ether which is akin to hers. If you could but find a family member. Oh! I know just the person! Yshtola has a sister who came to live in Gradania. She told me about her once. Oh, that is most fortunate indeed. Pray, seek this sister out then, and bring her to Evershade. There, we shall petition the Great One's aid in finding... Let us begin. Raya O, Arun, if you would. Hearken to me, O oh Great Ones. Pray, give yourselves to the life stream, a drifting soul to find. Please 
you stole her. Please come back. There. Now! A room has been readied at the roost. Pray, bear her thither at once. All that remains is to pray, my friends. Thank you. 